What's going on, everybody? This is Joe. And Amy. And we are back with the continuation of our series where we are reviewing the Varia decks. We were contacted by Guildhouse Games and asked if we would review their game, their new CCG. Uh, and we have been having a blast with it, to be fair. Not to, to say that we didn't think that we would, but I, I was unsure of what to expect. Uh, and I've been pleasantly surprised. I don't know about you. Hmm. Yes. So quite. so now we are here for Amy's next deck, the Volcanic Warrior deck. Mm -hmm. um, if you missed our video, you can check the iCard in the top corner uh, to see the playlist from the beginning where we kind of went over the picture on the front of the decks, of each of the decks, including obviously this Volcanic Warrior. Um, and Amy, do you do you want to go to the back? You want to open it up? How do you want to... Uh, so I pre-ripped the plastic here just to make it a bit easier for when I actually take the plastic off entirely. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just do that right now. Um, and here's what the back looks like. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do you think of that art? I think that's very different. Yes, <clears throat> I love it. There's a lot of action to it, a mm -hmm. lot of movement. Um, I love the sort of uh, the contrast between uh, the man who's coming at you with all the shadow on his skin and the glowing eyes and the glowing tattoo yeah. and the sort of um, shrapnel like volcanic mm -hmm. um, explosions coming out from behind him, essentially. Oh, yeah. It's very cool. Um, it's also interesting that here um, we see his axe weapon um, only very slightly uh, sort of... Illuminated like that? Yeah. There's only a little bit of that sort of lava-ness to it mm -hmm. on this back picture, whereas it's entirely lit like that on the front. Right. I also really like the fact that <clears throat> to show further the movement and the speed, presumably, with which he is moving towards you. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, from this picture, I get that he was standing near the volcano, and then when it erupted, it, like, launched him towards you. That's kind Perhaps, of what I get yeah. from that, or that his jump is like a, an, an eruption. Mm -hmm. um, but I like that the the curve to the handle of the axe gives you that indication of just how fast he's moving. Mm -hmm. Because I don't believe that that axe has a handle curved like that. Right. It just, to me, seems like he's just moving so quickly that it's bending the, the handle with the velocity with which he's moving. And obviously, then with, you know, how physics works and all that, it'll it'll go back to being straight again. It's just either a visual... Um, like, like uh, how our optical eyes illusion, it. Yeah. yeah, or it's actually happening just based on the the speed the and the amount force of force yeah. applied to it. Um, also, his hair, sort of doing this sort of flyaway thing, mm -hmm. even though it's so tightly compressed into that braid, um, and uh, just the um, just the position that his body is in, where his uh, where really. Uh, you're, you're seeing just his arms and his head and the top of one of his thighs. That's really all of his body that you can see because most of it is behind him as he's thrusting toward you. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I'll also point out uh, this deck, unlike literally any of the others that we've looked at, is a difficulty, or, yeah, difficulty of one. Um, two of which we've looked at so far have been difficulty three. Yes. And the last one, the sixth blade that we looked at, is difficulty four. And that is out of five. Correct. And this is one out of five. Um, so that's good. That What that indicates to me is that this is supposed to be the deck for new players, mm -hmm. right? Like this is the one that you do when you want to learn about the game. There's not a lot of complexity to it, but it's still, at least from from the... Uh, tagline that the creators have used. Uh, these are all supposed to be well balanced against one another. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this is still, uh, again, uh, this is still supposed to be able to be a, a competitive deck, despite the fact that it is a difficulty of one, as opposed to, like, like I said, the sixth blade that was a difficulty of four. Right. So basically what I can assume that they've done with this is it's easier to play, although it is 
effective against these harder to play decks. So you as a new player who doesn't know that much about the game can pick up this deck and still have a fighting chance against a well-versed opponent. Exactly. So uh, as we've done with the other decks, let's just quickly read the information that's on the back here because there is a difference with each one. It is towards the end, but I'll read it anyway. Forget everything you know about trading card games. When playing Varia, there aren't any minions to protect you or walls to hide behind. Instead, you raise the shield. You cast the spell. You swing for the win with your weapon of choice. If you want to decapitate all who challenge you, you'll have to knock their heads off yourself. Hmm. Very uh, graphic. <laughs> I like that. I mean, okay. <laughs> I wasn't planning on doing that, but I guess I will be. <laughs> we'll be curious to see how much decapitation is uh, in the art of these cards. I remember I, I had to help you <sighs> yeah. last time. It's up to you. I'm going to attempt to... Okay. Ah, there you go. Yeah, see if I you stick my finger in there and get underneath this lip, mm -hmm. um, I'm able to kind of pull it out. Perfect. Okay. Oh, and I guess our little oh, pamphlet got stuck in there. in there. Yeah, oh, it was uh, stuck in there for sure. <laughs> okay, so again, there's the uh, kind of the full art, if you will, version. Uh, yeah, you get of... to see a lot more of the hammer here. Yes. And the, the sort little... of wood, wood grain of it, yeah. Which is cool. Yeah. I like it a lot. You can and... better see his, um, his, like, ponytail. Or no, I guess that's fully depicted on the cover art yeah. of the uh, deck box. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I um, I, I like far enough so you guys can see it. There we go. I mentioned now you can see the parts of the art that was cut off. Oh, uh, okay. By the the Varia logo. Right. I mentioned. I think when we first looked at this, I still think to me it seems that that is the um, that that hammer that he's holding is like a forging hammer. Basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so feel free to scan that QR code if you would like to learn how to play, but also you can check the description for one, uh, the information to learn how to play the game, but also if you're interested in buying these decks for yourselves. Oh, so this is the back art mm -hmm. um, cut smaller, right? Yeah, um, and then of course we have the other deck box art yeah. on the back. Okie doke. So here we go. All right. I'm going to pull it a little closer yeah, that's perfect. so you can see. So now we're starting with this critical strike. Um, I have I've seen this art before, but not in other decks. I think just from being on their website and, and um, actually probably from going through the tutorial of mm. learning how to play. Yes. This card was used, um, but it is very clearly the uh, Volcanic Warrior. So. <laughs> yes. Um, I will say the... Um, the hammer looks a bit different to me in this picture. Okay. As um, in the cover art, it sort of looks more of like just a generic wood grain okay. on the hammer. Um, but in this picture, it looks like a metal uh, top, t like, like maybe the um, handle is wood, but the top part is metal hmm. and has um, engravings on it that are similar to his tattoo or look almost like a some sort of a tribal or um, even possibly like a Celtic knot sort of style um, decorating on it. And that would make sense if my theory about it being a forger's hammer uh, rings true, that it would be a metal-topped hammer as opposed to a wooden-topped hammer. Absolutely. So. Um, so I'm not really quite sure why it looks... Um, uh, wooden on the cover art because hmm. uh, when you said that I was like, hmm, I mean that would make sense but it's wood and you know, when you're working with molten metal, that's probably not the best choice. Yeah. Oh, and, and look who he's attacking with his hammer. Oh! It's our friend from the Sixth Blade. It's our Sixth Blade man. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. He's got his hat shield up and everything so uh, feel free to go watch our last video if you want to learn more about that. Yeah, I love how they've got the the brightness of the background in this art mm -hmm. uh, against uh, these these sort of shadowy figures. Um, I just wish that maybe um, there were some stronger lines within the shadowy figures. Um, again, that a, a bit of a contrast would would help a bit with seeing detail 
on the actual uh, people or okay. subjects sure. of the art here. Three critical strikes. Whoa. Um, Shield dang. spear. I actually really <laughs> love the... Um, I mean, I've mentioned how much I love the um, the borders on these cards, especially the colors on those borders, but the the contrast of just like the gold bar on the top where the words are, it's got to be the color of the, the art itself, like that striking red and black. Um, combined with the purplish blue on the sides and the gold on top is very striking, and it it that stood out to me a lot. When yeah, you to this, card. this to me looks much more like a digital piece of art. Okay, um, it's got so much more of a modern feel than really anything else that we've seen so far from any of the decks that we've already opened. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the picture of this man, it, it literally looks like I'm just seeing him. Like, he's yeah. just sitting on my sofa. Yeah, it's like the... And I'm looking at the side of his face as he's watching TV. What was like, the... <laughs> yeah, what was the art charm on Death Pirate, I mm -hmm, believe? And mm -hmm. I, I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, I'd be curious to see if it's the same artist, because it is oh, so photorealistic, mm -hmm. in, at least in terms of the, the drawing of the human here. Right. Um, the face itself, specifically. Oh, yes. Because um, there's enough blending of, say, this sort of arrowhead mm -hmm. um, and even um, the light around his sort of um, clothing sure. um, that, I don't know, I, I, I guess that would almost be more like a technique of, like, making you really notice how realistic the face is. By making the rest of the picture slightly less realistic. Sure. Or it might just be like a stylistic choice of the artist who is particularly good at making people's faces in their art look more realistic or look intensely realistic. Um, so they're kind of leaning into that. Okay. And, um and they don't necessarily try as hard with every other detail in the picture. Mm. Um or maybe they just, like, that's what they're good at. Right. You know? And they um, are definitely good at it, I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do like also, I mean, it's called Shield Spear, and it really does look like that's a big old... Could you imagine if that thing went through your body? What yeah, that's you, uh, insane. I don't know that you'd be alive after that occurred to you. Yeah. Um, also, um... It's odd, though. It, it appears that the hole is very small. Right. Um, if something like this went through <laughs> your body, mm -hmm. there would be a oh. very large, very, I mean, judging by the shape of this. Like a line, probably? Like, you know, just because if it, if it is flat. Well, it doesn't appear to be flat. It appears to be sort of faceted mm. and rounded and okay. thick sure. in certain areas. So I think it would really, really create... A hole here that would be very imperfect looking, <laughs> very messy, and very large. And I don't see that there. I'm also uh, I'm curious because, like, this is called a shield spear, right? It's in the Volcanic Warrior deck. And we're definitely in the first half of the deck where it seems to be cards that, or at least with every other deck that we've opened, it's cards that relate to our main character, this Volcanic Warrior. And yet... In all of the arts that we've seen, I mean, he's got an axe, he's got a hammer. Um, I, I don't know where he would have gotten a spear. Although, again, if we're going with that he's a forger, um, that maybe he forged this shield spear, and it's just one of the other weapons, many weapons that he carries on him, um, in order to... Because, like, you know, a forger would be able to make a shield, they'd be able to make a spear, and so to make a shield into a spearhead uh, probably wouldn't be that difficult for somebody who is... Um, used to working with, you know, molten metals and creating weapons and things like that, so. I mean, I think it would just for the sake of shields are huge <laughs> and spearheads are small. Yeah. And it kind of defeats the purpose of a spearhead a bit <laughs> to stick a gigantic shield on there and have it, like, and and expect it to act the way a spear would. Well, and uh, also I was going to mention this earlier, but I think it's very interesting that this is a magical attack 
chaos card. So maybe that's just indicative of the fact that it's chaotic, that it is... Or magical. Yeah, that yeah. it's... And it is a magical, yeah, exactly. So who knows? Maybe that's why. Yeah, maybe, like, um, you know, it's the sort of thing where you just, um, you know, speak an incantation and this thing just kind of appears out of thin air and then, you know, Spears your opponent. it actually like burrows its way through your opponent. Um, even though a uh, typical physics wouldn't suggest that that would be the way it would work. Right. Um, I will just before we wrap up on this card, the, um, the art is incredible. The yeah. contrast is incredible. The colors, the use of light, gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, I, like I can't say that enough about how the art on this card looks. Yeah, I told you it was very striking to me when you when you switched over from the last one. So. Again, I'll point out that the that the purple and blue uh, sort of ombre of the border really stands out very nicely against the reds um, and the gold up here. It just it just is so striking, especially compared to. You know, other cards that we've seen or the last card that we looked at. Yeah. It's it's very... Um, I love it. Yeah. A couple of those. Oh, three of those. Three of those. And then Spellbreaker. Oh. I... There are a couple of these. I do not so. know who he is fighting here because um, it is a character that we have not seen before. But it's very awesome. And again, it seems here that he is, that he being our main character, the Volcanic Warrior, first of all, uh, it depicts his hair as much longer than we've seen it previously. Yeah. Uh, and also, he's fighting barehanded. He does not, he is not using a weapon. Um, whereas his opponent, this kind of blue hulking figure, is uh, wielding what looks to be something similar to what he has, a, um, a an axe with... Uh, what seem to be some fire accents at the top, or um, or fire magic, or something to that effect. But I will say, I'm noticing in this picture, his hair is showing that uh, his hair is all sort of on the top of his head, and this whole area of his head, the back whole part, is shaved. Mm -hmm. um, I will point out that that's similar to the man who is uh, in the tavern. Attempting to uh, throw those daggers at the patron. Of the correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, and uh, a long braid like this or something could probably be easily sort of wound up into a kind of bun um, mm -hmm. as that man in that card uh, had his hair yeah. depicted. So it could be the same guy. Um, yeah, this creature looks like some sort of a. Uh, it almost looks like a storm giant from other other things that I've seen, other uh, fantasy properties, if you will, or a djinn or something like that. He kind of looks like a scrotum. <laughs> wow. Like a very wrinkly, very blue scrotum. Gross. It's very gross. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I, I but think... this art is beautiful, um, definitely painted. Um, love the use of light on the... On the axe here, beautiful. Yeah. I, think um, the, I love the depictions of the steam mm -hmm. to show the heat of the lava. Yeah, it looks that like they're, they're just on. fighting in a volcano. Mm -hmm. um, I like that the card is super flavorful in that it's called Spellbreaker. He's attacking purely physically. It's a physical attack card. It's strength based, <laughs> but it says if your target's action is magical, this action gets plus three plus three. So it's it you get a boost if this is against a magic attack. So. Very good. We have Enrage. We finally get oh. to see this card, which makes sense that it's in this deck. Look at the character. I get it. I was hoping there'd be another one behind it, but... <laughs> oh, okay. So this is our guy. Yeah. This is our lava guy. Yes, the Volcanic Warrior. Yeah. Um, because he's got the same which hammer. huge. But now it's, it's all barbed and mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe there's like different uh, levels that this hammer has. It has its like pure wooden basic um, level. And it's got its like partially metal, slightly scary um, 
level, and then it's got this gigantic Barbie level. So it, Barbie, nice. <laughs> <laughs> that is, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen that accessory with Barbies, although, you know, that is not something that I grew up with, but. Uh, so the flavor text on this card says, ancestral cries split the sky as vanquished foes tremble in their graves. This is the might of runic rage. I like how it's a bit poetic, mm -hmm. that flavor text. Like, it's not perfectly poetic, but it's a little poetic. I like that. Um, and I think it's interesting, too, this guy looks a lot different in this art than in the other arts that we've seen. Again, yeah. in Rage, it makes sense. Like, it looks like his tattoos have turned green in color mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that they are exuding a lot more heat or magical energy or mm -hmm. what have you. Um, he looks bigger, buffer, and I'm curious if, or I guess I can surmise that because he looks that enraged and that um, embiggened, if you will, maybe that's the same thing that's happening to his hammer, and that's why you're seeing the barbs on it like that. Mm -hmm. so. And um, his skin has turned red. Yes, I wasn't sure if that was uh, a trick of the light source. Or if that's truly just what's happening to him, or a little bit of both. It doesn't appear to be a trick of the light to me. Yeah. Um, based on this art. Oh yeah, I don't disagree. I was just I, I was curious between those two options, which it might be. Um, but I do love that they kind of turned those glowing, um, uh, as this would put it, runes or mm -hmm. his tattoos, mm -hmm. uh, green, to kind of contrast the red. Uh, body. Yeah, because it would be a lot harder to see, you know, y you could probably do some lighting things with like making it more yellow or orange, mm -hmm. but it's still, like you said, would, would probably blend. Okay. Then we have Fenrock's Leash. So I'm curious then, uh, I assume Fenrock is the uh, human man there that is on the leash as opposed to our character holding the leash. Um, really? I don't know. It's Fenrock's leash. So. Yeah, so this is his leash that he puts on people. Oh, I was going to say, I mean, <laughs> if if I have a dog and I have a leash, it's not my leash, it's my dog's leash. But Yeah, but that's one dog. Yeah, as opposed to just if a multi-purpose leash if for you, anyone yeah, you, any you dog have, you come across. If you have a thing where you put people on leashes, then... Um, <laughs> I, I assure you... It's going to be your leash. Yeah. Thank you, but I assure you I do not have that thing. Uh, yes. Good. <laughs> uh, and all that it said... There is flavor text, but all it says is heal. So... Yeah. I, you know, I'm not judging. <laughs> if, if you have a thing where you put people on leashes, it's your leash. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I love um, the darkness of the rock that he's standing on, the shadows, um, the darkness of the sort of vines that he's using as the leash um, with this nice bright lava light yeah. just shining behind them. Yeah. Um, I love the face <laughs> that this man is making. Oh, yeah. The terror in his eyes, the fact that you can see his teeth um, He's, like, grinding them because he's in such a stressful, scary situation. Right. Yeah. Very, very I love, cool. I love how they made the, um, the tattoo glow even more than the actual lava that's flowing behind them. Yeah. There's more than one of those. Oh, and the fact that the rock is pointing toward the sort of subject of the picture. Sure. And again, we'll see as we go on. Hopefully we'll, we'll get clarification. Uh, Amy believes our character's name is Fenrock. I, I, I don't necessarily disagree, but yeah. We have cranial crash, which is awesome. He is slamming his head into this man's head. What a headbutt. Yeah. Um, high costed card. So I'm sure it's very good. Um, Oh, and this is, I think, the first time that we've seen the power up here uh, have a star as its indicator as opposed to a number. So it's mm. star plus a D6, um, and star is equal to three plus the highest of these indicators on the side here. So that's really cool. Hmm. Okay. Um, and it's a physical attack strength, and the flavor text says, there are fights, and then there are raptures. Quote by Magnus. 
All so right. we don't know who Magnus is, but I will say, not for nothing, it makes sense that uh, a volcanic warrior's name would be Magnus. Magma, Magnus. Yes, it would. So that's my thought. Again, we, we have no confirmation one way or another. It could be Fenrock. It could be uh, Magnus. But, yeah. Regardless. Still really um, cool. Love this art. Um, it's different in style from a lot of the other ones. Very, yeah. very. Um, it's much more sketchy in nature. Um, sort of a, um, a watercolored background. Yeah. Um, like a beautiful landscape. And then this sort of very bloody, violent picture <laughs> atop it. Yeah. Um, I love the contrast of the bright light behind them against their sort of much more earthy looking skin. Does yeah, that make sense? Absolutely. That, and I, I think that it's very purposeful that they have that red ribbon as what he's using to pull his opponent in to cranially smash them. Absolutely. For more of that contrast, like you were saying, because yeah. it really stands out. Right. And it really puts your eye right here. Yeah. Um, and my favorite part, Oddly, is that they actually depict his tattoos in this picture as being blue. Okay. Um, which is just sort of their way of making them stand out so you can really tell who the character is. Um, because it's against this sort of um, burgundies mm -hmm. that are going on here. Um, so it shows up very well. Um, but it's also kind of showing that in this particular moment, his tattoos aren't glowing. They're not, um, they're not spewing lava right. or anything like that. So there's different, um, levels of his power or magic or whatever that he uses at different times. Mm -hmm. And right now, um, his tattoos are not doing that, which we've pretty much only s seen Them up activated. until now. Sure. Yeah. Wow, I get it. His tattoos are like mood rings. That's what it is. Ew. <laughs> okay, sorry. <Maybe. laughs> yeah, I love the, the texture of this. Um, the fact that it's so old school. It's, it's sketchy. It's painted. Um, you know, there's not an ounce of digital feeling that you get from this picture oh, whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and I think there's more than one of those. That's cool. Okay, and then we have the, the art from the back of the box, Explosive Charge. And again, yeah. that we loved, or we were talking for a while about the art on the back of the box, and I have to say, again, the um, the border, the frame on, on, the, on the sides of this card, and yeah. the gold name on the top just really make this pop even more mm -hmm. than previously. And yet, even though, like, the, maybe the gold not as much as the last one that we talked about with this because mm -hmm. there's some other yellow in the picture but still i mean the the borders on the sides and the the name bar at the top are just so good i yeah. like that a lot yeah i really want to point out in this picture which we didn't really talk about before um when we were speaking about like the velocity that he's traveling yeah um you can tell how fast he's going because of the fact that these rocks are so blurry mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that you almost can't even tell that they're rocks. Yeah. Um, oh, I love that flavor text, too. The farther you fly, or yeah, the further you fly, the faster they fall. Yeah. Very cool. Very Again, nice. not as much lore-based in that flavor text, but very flavorful, which I appreciate. Yeah, so. I feel like that's probably incorrect, though. <laughs> Why do you say that? I mean, if you're if you're flying further, then they're farther away from you, right? And so it's going to take more time for you to get to them. Unless they're that's <laughs> so not, they're not going to fall as fast. Oh, I don't think that's what that implies at all. <laughs> I think if you shoot yourself as if you're shooting for 50 feet away and they're 10 feet away, they're going to fall a lot faster than if you shoot yourself 20 feet away and they're 10 feet away. Okay. Because yeah. you're going a lot faster, which means you're going to be able to put your axe through them or knock them down mm -hmm. a lot faster than you would if you were traveling a little bit slower. Okay. That's how I took that, mm -hmm, at least. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. A couple of those. There it is. Oh, here's our decapitation. There's the decapitate. <laughs> now this... Costs a lot. Wow, that's the, that. I think that's the highest cost we've ever seen. <laughs> Nine wow. is the cost on that. 
which That's is crazy definitely because definitely the highest we've seen. Well, and that would make sense because uh, you can only have ten action points a turn. Um, and the power on this card is 10 plus 1d6. So that's crazy. Wow. Uh, first of all, <laughs> he's using the hammer to decapitate the guy, which is very flavorful because the flavor text then says blades are overrated. <laughs> so he's not even using a blade to decapitate somebody. That is so cool. Wow. Interesting. Oh, oh. so that's why it costs so much. Because it says, when making a focus roll, which is this uh, triangular uh, number on the bottom, unless I'm way off, uh, but I believe that that is correct, um, when you make a focus roll, if you roll the maximum value for one or more of the die you rolled, so it's a d4, you have a 25% chance, this action gets plus infinity plus zero until end of moment. No thanks. That's a bit much. <laughs> well, now we know why it's not difficult to beat your opponents with this deck. That's what I mean. And also, now you know why it costs nine. Because they want to make sure that you're not really doing anything else for that turn. Yeah, no. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, I, I, can't even, I can't even really talk about how it looks that this head is coming off. I love it. With the hammer being the tool used to take it off. It just doesn't make sense to me. Oh, it makes um, sense to me. I you know, I, I mean, I can see, like, you know, this 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 blood is jagged, um, but the break itself is very clean, which wouldn't happen. It just wouldn't. <laughs> and then if you were to use something like this to actually remove someone's head, not only would the skin and tissue area be completely jagged and really just messed up, so would the head itself. Yeah, I mean, to me, what happened here was they he did a, an underhand, like, baseball swing hit the guy under the chin, and what you're seeing is the follow-through of now the hammer being up behind him like that. So instead of what you would typically think with a hammer is you come down from above mm -hmm. on them, you're coming from underneath and knocking the guy, like hitting the bottom of the chin, knocking the head off, which is why it's flying backwards and it's upside down when we're looking at it because of the way that it flew. Um, I don't yeah, necessarily... but that would just fling the man backwards. Well, it, again... Like it wouldn't it, attach his head. By our understandings of physics and strength, mm. if you have someone with strength enough to lift a mountain, for example, and that person punches you, you're not going to just have your head snap back. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Like, so well, that's what I'm saying. Like, his whole body would have jettisoned from that swing. Yeah. It's just, it's just... I mean, his jaw probably would have also broken. Yeah. And probably also his nose with a bit of that follow through. But... His head wouldn't have been severed from his body. His body would be flying backwards. Yeah, but it's just it's just funnier that his head came off. I mean, I kind of see this as like he used the axe to cut it most of the way, or partially, and then he's using the hammer to knock it off. Okay, and I, either that or I would say maybe it's... It can't be sideways, because the head's upside down. So, I don't know. I, I think that attempting to discuss how physics would allow or not allow this man's head to come off is uh, silly. I think that uh, his head came off, and it's cool. <laughs> and you should let it Moving out. on. <laughs> uh, the art is great. Yeah, uh, it's really good. I uh, love the look on the face. Like yeah. You can tell that it's like, yep, this is the face that he was making right before he got hit, <laughs> and that is the face he will be making forever now. Yeah, um, I like how the bodies sort of have this glow of the lava down below that you can't even see. Yeah. Um, but, you know but the there. background has this washed out blue color. Um, so you kind of got the red light coming from one side, the blue light coming from the other side. It's very cool. Ah, ah we our have friend. Arias Tarka again. Mm -hmm. So this is the second time that we've seen this art, and we've seen the other art, uh, the song card, I believe it's called, uh, but I don't exactly remember. But these, these two characters depicted on another card. Right. So once again... Um, the uh, the flavor text on this card says, As Regia's decree, or at Regia's decree, the dark star descended and left nothing but a chorus of calamity in her wake. I, I'm i so curious about these two characters. I want to know more. Yeah, uh, so here is that sword deck. that I was referencing. Correct. I was uh, sort of laying in the 
god or goddess's arms mm-hmm. horizontally. Um, and then in the other card that we saw, it was laid down sort of in front of our prayer. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the magical attack, Abyssal Dark. So it wasn't a so song, cool. it was a prayer. Okay. It was something prayer in the name of her. Sure. All right. I like it. Again, I, I just I want to know more, and it's hard to glean from this uh, what else, but I, yeah. I, yeah, I definitely want to know more about these two. Um, and again, as we've learned, that typically is the card or the type of card that signals that the deck is switching from uh, Volcanic Warrior, in this case, specific to kind of more generic. And sure enough, we have the uh, Roman Warrior Brace Yourself card that yeah. we've seen many times. We have the Deadly Swing, which we've seen before. Mm-hmm. Sublimate. Mm-hmm. Sublimate, of course. Multiples of those. Combat Reflexes again. Yeah. This kind of reminds me of, like, um, Black Widow. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> She's got, like, the same outfit yeah. and hair. Yeah, and kind of, kind of the same stance that yeah. Black Widow would have. Yeah, Like, getting ready um, to attack. And it's got that sort of comic book style just a yes, bit. Yes, Absolutely. Wholeheartedly agree. Another swift escape. So this was what Amy was talking about, about a character throwing daggers at uh, like a tavern patron or a a bar patron or whatever. Right. So this is our patron. And just off frame here uh, on one of the other cards is the sort of back of our man who's, who's throwing the daggers, which I now believe to be our volcanic warrior. Okay. I don't know that I buy that, but I, I, I understand the like, correlation with the hair and stuff. Mm-hmm. Here's the backflip card that you've mentioned is the, um, speaking of, you know, connected <laughs> artworks, that this is this art right. zoomed out so that you see who this deadly swing is going at, mm-hmm. at a person who has backflipped away from such a deadly swing. Yeah. Very cool. There's the there we are. edge. Perfect. Yeah, I don't think it's him. Look, he's got a like a cloak on. Yeah. Like the hairstyle is the same, but I, I have never seen our volcanic warrior friend wear clothing on the top half of his body before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He just doesn't need it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's like a Hawaiian guy. I oh, guess. I was gonna say you it's know, not like volcanic. he's gonna get I was gonna say it's not like he's gonna get cold. He's got like magma running through his. Yeah, yeah, tattoos. true. I was trying to say, oh, it's warm in Hawaii, where he's from. No, idiot. He's like, you know, covered in flowing magma. He's like fighting ninjas and stuff in a wheat field. So who knows what the temperatures are like? It's true. He's also throwing daggers at patrons. Yeah, exactly. He's just very multifaceted. You just don't. I just don't understand it clearly. Exactly. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> Flurry of fists. Mm. Okay. And have we seen this card before? I don't think we no, did. No, I think this is one of the key arts for the cards. So we've seen it in the um, learn to play, like the tutorial. Yes, yes, that's where we've seen this before. Yeah. So I will talk about the art now. Sure. Um, I love the visible veins in the fists. Okay. Um, to show like. How much force and and the sort of swishing of light here to show like how much force is behind this punch. Oh yeah, not even just the swishing of light, but then the like mirrored uh, or shadow versions of ah. the hands, just showing how fast the flurry of fists are coming mm-hmm. at you. And again, I'll say my guess is that this is one of the monk characters, only because as we as I mentioned in the first video, right? I have experience with monks from D and D. Uh, and in D&D, monks have an attack known as Flurry of Blows, which is just the flurry of fists flying over and over again. So, yeah. Um, that makes the, sense. The flavor text on this card says, Hopes crushed. Dreams crushed. Face crushed. Awesome. Amazing. That's very, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I like that a lot. Yeah. Very cool. We have Twin Strokes, which is the other half of that uh, Combat Reflexes card. Right. So all the... All the um, dual art stories being told here. Yeah, so far. I actually like that a lot. I feel like it makes the sort of story more cohesive. Yes, and more complete. Even if we don't know what that story is quite yet. Absolutely. We're kind of <laughs> able to piece it together a little bit because these cards are clearly tied to one another. Yeah, it's very, very cool. 
Ah, here we go. So now we can hopefully learn a little bit more about this hammer, the thorium crusher. Mm. So the it crushes all those thoriums. <laughs> the flavor text is quenched in blood. Runic weapons are forged with an unnatural thirst for battle. Mm. Interesting. Okay, I like it. Very, mm. very cool. Uh, it is one of the item cards, because now we are into the item cards for the deck. Um, and again, we've we've kind of seen that these are like the signature items of our main characters, so it's nice. Uh, I actually like once we did it this way, instead of how we did it with the Shadow Assassin, because we didn't quite know uh, exactly what we were going to be looking for. Um, but I like that we did it this way, because like you kind of get a break from the main character for a bit with the generic cards, and then you go back into like the meat and potatoes of their lore uh, with their items to, to make things clearer. So I like that a lot. Okay, so I guess this sort of wood grain is actually supposed to look like runes. It's runic, yeah, that makes sense. And again, maybe they're not tattoos, they're like carved runes on his body, so it like, well, know, kind it of, be, and it matches. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like it's runes carved into the wood. Mm -hmm. And then because it's runes, it's magical enough to then transform into a metal sword or oh, yeah. a metal hammer as yeah. opposed to a wooden one. Hmm, maybe. Ah, and the Molten Ravager axe. So this, again, as we saw in the art, now we know, um, again, we can see it in full molten. Um Pulled from the fires of Fenrock's maw, this burning axe ignites a lust for war in all who wield it. Mm. Okay, so that... Interesting. So that leads me to believe maybe it's the axe that's giving him these abilities, which maybe. makes sense because it's only the one arm that has the runes. Mm-hmm. Um, which is awesome. Like, going all the way up into, like, his face and his arm and everything. Like, it... it Interesting. I just assumed that it was like the guy that was having these abilities, but it maybe it's the axe that's giving it to him instead. What do you think of the colors? I love the colors on that axe. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Really awesome. Another, an, oh, the, I'm sorry, I was like another Flurry of Fists. It's the token for Flurry of ah. Fists. And then typically the token cards are double sided. So on the other side, we have the uh, twin strokes as okay. well. And then as we saw, there's another flurry of fists with, on the back, a the combat reflexes. Right. So, so there the you other, go. other half of this. Very cool. Very, very cool. Sort of a, <laughs> that kind of deal. Yeah, kind of. I like that. <laughs> All right. And the stacks card. So actually, this is the stacks card that we missed in the Shadow Assassin deck because we didn't know that there was a back to the stacks Correct. card. Correct. So now we actually get to look at it. Uh, this is the bleeding or hemotoxin oh. stacks on one side. And then on the other side, almost assuredly, it's in rage and fatigue because that's what it's been on all the others. Yes. Would you look at that? It's in rage <laughs> and fatigue. Yes. Um, Interesting. The on the card behind it, the the D six and the D four for this. To, okay, sorry, I thought they were gray. I was like, why are they that? But yeah, yeah. go ahead, please. I would, um, I would love to. Yeah. So this art is incredible. It's beautiful. I love the greens of the skin, um, sort of um, contrasted by the magentas and purples of the robe and the background. Um, it's pretty amazing. Uh, I love the detail. I love that the eyes sort of exist here, I guess, as like, it almost looks like the, um, the never idle half hands yeah. are what is sort of drawing it in the air. Okay. Um, here, and then this one is not being drawn, it's just existing while this one is pouring the hemotoxin. Well, and it's funny that it's funny that you mentioned it. If I recall correctly, first of all, I don't know if you recall or you remember, but the Shadow Assassin deck did have this card. Yes. That that had this art on it. And and so I think if I recall correctly, that is the card that had the flavor text, the half hands are never idle. Oh. I okay. think it was specifically this one. Because I remember that the hands were like pouring something or whatever. So okay. so yeah, maybe those eyes are a reaction to the whatever those hands are okay. doing. Yeah. I like that. Um, and then again, with the, the D6 and the D4 here, um, similar in color to the um, sixth blade, 
but this is redder and the six blade was more orange. Um, but it is very close, I think, in color between yeah. the two, um, which is interesting to me. So, Amy, what was your thought uh, of this deck? This was one of your choices. Yeah, this. Um, this one's good. I feel like it's a bit more cohesive than the other ones that we've seen. Sure. Um, and maybe that maybe that has to do with um, the lack or the lack the lower complexity. Yes, or, or that's difficulty. exactly what I was thinking. Sure. Yeah, that that um, the cohesion of this um, really helps it be less of a difficult deck to play. Here, let's uh, show everybody what we're working with here. Perfect. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I liked this a lot as well. I think, interestingly, I think lore was somewhat lacking in this one in comparison to the others. I agree. Um, I think we got some information that maybe that axe is what's giving him his power. Mm -hmm. um, we heard about the hammer and that it's got runes on it, but like that's kind of it. And Honestly, at least as far as I'm concerned, maybe it's something that I'm blatantly missing, but with the Leash versus Magnus issue, I, I really have no idea even what his name is. Yeah. Right? I'd like to think it's Magnus just because it makes the most sense, but I don't. I, I, I think your argument is perfectly valid in terms of the fact that um, Fenrock's Leash, like, you know, although, hold on. That could be his only pet. Oh, no, here we go. <laughs> here we go. So this is what I thought. Okay, so this will help us out a bit. Let's look at these two cards. Fenrock's Leash and the Molten Ravager, right? Yeah. So the Molten Ravager in its flavor text, oh God, <laughs> says I'll hold them. pulled from Fenrock's Maw. So unless this axe was pulled from our character's mouth, I don't envision that uh, <laughs> Fenrock is our main character. Okay. I think Magnus would be our main character. And to me, that means maybe Fenrock is... Like, Maw, to me, means... It's mouth, but to me, it means, like, big, gigantic, like, mouth. So maybe it's, like, a dragon-type character or something mm -hmm. that he was able to pull this molten axe from and gain all this power. Right. And if that's the case... So that's case, who he's drawing his power from, regardless right. of what the creature is that's where he's drawing his power from. Right. So that's probably also how this leash is is powerful in any way. Well, right. I think it just means that that's the leash that is holding or held whatever that beast was, which is really cool. That he was able to repurpose that leash for his own use. The oh, okay. I didn't think of it that way. Well, because he just I because... I thought of it as a magic leash that had the magic... The same as the axe did. Oh, I see what you're saying. Interesting. Yeah, I just assumed it was like... it was owned by this Fenrock guy. Okay. I just assumed it was a leash on Fenrock, some type of a beast. Okay. Uh, again, I'll say dragon, but yeah. who knows. Um, just as feasible. Right, exactly. And that it's it's a leash that was able to hold down a beast like that, and mm -hmm. so using it on a human just makes sense. Yeah. So, okay. So, uh, I, I somewhat take back my statement of uh, the lack of complexity of the lore, Um because it gave a little bit more once yeah, you kind of saw those names. Out. Out. Yeah, yeah. So I like that. I like that a lot. Um, and I like that, like you said, it's like a little bit less complex. It's a little bit lower difficulty, but it's still. I mean, first of all, it had one of the highest costing cards we've seen. Yeah. Or the highest costed card we've By seen. By a lot, because yeah. I believe the highest one we had seen prior was six. Six or seven, maybe six. I think um, it was six. Yeah, I think so too. Because I think I think it was five, and then I was corrected immediately in that video, and it went up to six. Which <laughs> yes, <laughs> the next card was a six. <laughs> so okay, so yeah, I I don't know. I liked this deck a lot. I think it's uh it's really interesting and intriguing, and um, again, just more information on the lore. I would I I love it. I'm looking forward to finding out more as we progress through these decks and then uh, off into the future of Varia. So what I will say is uh, if you have been following along with this channel with all of these releases, what I will say is hopefully you noticed that uh, we released these videos Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then you didn't see a video Sunday, but you did see one Monday because uh, that's when this video came out. That's because uh, we have more than one channel. 
uh, and we have different upload schedules for our different channels. So Saturday is typically an off day for us, but because we're doing these special videos, we decided that Thursday and Friday would be, which are our regular upload days for this channel, would be two Varia videos, plus we added one on Saturday. We have this one today on Monday, and then we will have three more coming up, the last three, this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday in that order. So definitely stay tuned for that. Obviously subscribing, ring the bell for notifications, we'll let you know when those videos come out. You will be notified as soon as they hit. Uh, you can also follow us. Check the description down below. You can check out our Facebook and Twitters. We've been putting the videos up there as well. Um, but there is uh, obviously when we put out a video on Sunday and then what we're doing Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, that is over on our Video Games for All channel. So you can check that out. That'll be popping up on the screen soon. But more importantly, thank you again to Guildhouse Games for uh, giving us the opportunity to review these decks, review these cards uh, by sending these to us. We are honored and privileged and and it's been fun i've been enjoying it so far yes we are uh just over halfway through we have four down three to go uh, and i'm looking forward to seeing what the other three look like but um if you are interested in picking up these cards for yourself check down in the description there are two links for you one is to learn how to play the game and the other is to actually go and try to purchase these for yourself so hopefully you uh enjoyed we would love to hear your feedback down in the comments below yes and for now, from us here at the Geek for All family of channels, I have been Joe. And I'm Amy. And as we always say, in whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody.